Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at how to calculate the equilibrium constant or Kc value. There's a sequential method for calculating the Kc. It's sometimes known as the Rice method or sometimes known as Thanks, Nina. That's right, the ICE method. So I want to take you through two examples of how to calculate the Kc value using this ICE method. Let's look at this first question. We're being told in the question we have two moles of phosphorus pentachloride, PCl5, and that's being allowed to decompose inside a sealed container. And that container has a volume of 20 decimeters cubed, 20 liters. We're allowing that reaction to reach equilibrium and then the equilibrium mixture is being analyzed. And it's being found that that equilibrium mixture contains 1.2 moles of chlorine Cl2 product. From this information, we're being asked to calculate the Kc value for that equilibrium reaction. You'll always be provided with the symbol equation for that reversible reaction, that equilibrium reaction taking place. So we've got PCl5 decomposing to form PCl3, phosphorus trichloride, and Cl2 chlorine gas. Immediately what I've done is I've drawn a table below those three substances to keep my working really organized. Next, we come to the I in the ICE method. That's known as the initial moles. We simply record how many moles of each of the substances we have information about from the question. Now, we've been told in this question we have two moles of PCl5 at the start of this reaction. We've been told nothing about the PCl3 or Cl2. So both of these, we can assume they are zero, because we haven't formed any yet in this reaction. So we have two moles of PCl5, and we haven't yet formed any moles of product, so we have zero moles of PCl3 and Cl2. These are our initial moles at the start of the reaction. Now, to complete the rest of the table and the rest of the method, we need to look at what they've told us in the question. Well, we've got the volume, but that's not really relevant at this point. What they have told us, though, is that at equilibrium, we would have formed 1.2 moles of chlorine. So we now know one of the equilibrium mole parameters. We know how much chlorine was formed. So we now know this is 1.2. This is where we come into the change in moles and the equilibrium moles stages, the C and the E in the ICE method. So now on to the C stage, the change in moles. This is the change in moles, the amount of reactant or product to get ourselves the amount shown at equilibrium. So let's look at the chlorine first of all, the one we have some information about. How do we get from zero moles of chlorine at the start of the reaction to 1.2 moles at equilibrium? Well, it must have increased by 1.2 moles. So our change in moles is plus 1.2, zero plus 1.2 moles. At this point, we need to look at the molar ratio for the other reactants and products in this equation to work out how they're gonna change in their moles to reach their equilibrium moles as well. The chlorine is being formed by the decomposition of PCl5. Now, one mole of PCl5 will form one mole of chlorine. So how much PCl5 needs to be used up to form 1.2 moles of chlorine at equilibrium? Well, since it's a one to one ratio, we're gonna assume that to form 1.2 moles of chlorine, we have to use up 1.2 moles of PCl5 from our original two moles. So our change in moles will be Two moles originally, minus 1.2, that's the PCl5 being used up in the reaction to form the products, leaving us with 0.8 moles of PCl5 left at equilibrium. Lastly, we can deduce how many moles of PCl3 will be formed based on that same molar ratio principle. So one mole of PCl5 appears to form one mole of PCl3. So if we've used up 1.2 moles of PCl5, it is logical that we'll be able to form 1.2 moles of PCl3 based on that one-to-one -one molar ratio. So we assume that that is gonna go up by 1.2 as well, zero plus 1.2 moles being formed because we're using up 1.2 moles of PCl5 to form these products. And that means we formed 1.2 moles of PCl3. So we now have all of our relevant moles of reactants and product present at equilibrium. Now, think back to the Kc expression, it doesn't actually utilize moles. It actually utilizes concentrations. The equilibrium constant is utilizing concentrations in the expression. So we have to convert our moles at equilibrium into concentrations at equilibrium. Concentration equals moles divided by volume. So we divide by the volume 
20 decimeters cubed in the question, we convert our mole values into concentrations, as I've done here. So I've taken the moles equilibrium from the previous section, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.2, divided them all by 20 liters, 20 decimeters cubed, which is the volume presented in the question to convert this into concentrations. So we have 0 0.04 moles per liter of PCL5 and 0 0.06 moles per liter of PCL3 and CL2 respectively. These are the values we'll plug into our KC expression. And now we need to work out the KC expression itself, plug in the numbers into our KC expression and calculate the KC value. If you need a refresher on how to construct KC expressions and to deduce units for KC, then please check out the link in this video. Have a look at that and then come back to this. So the KC expression is products over reactants. That is the concentrations of the products raised to the power of the coefficients in the balanced equation divided by the concentrations of the reactants also raised to the power of their stoichiometry or, or coefficients in the balanced equation. Now, there are no values coefficients in this balanced equation. It's a one, one, one ratio. So no need to raise any of these concentrations to any powers. It's just gonna be literally the concentration of PCL3 multiplied by the concentration of CL2 divided by the concentration of PCL5. So we just plug our numbers in like so. So 0 0.06 times 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.04 gives us a KC value of 0 0.09. And finally, for this example, to calculate the unit, we simply substitute in the unit for concentration in place of the values in the KC expression and see what we're left with. So that here, okay, we've got moles per litre times moles per litre divided by moles per litre. So we can cancel out one moles per litre on top and bottom, leaving us with moles per litre, moles per dm minus three over nothing effectively. So we're left with moles per dm minus three as the unit for this particular KC calculation. Job done, folks. One more to go. Now, just when we look at this second, slightly harder word example, just wanna say, if you find this video or other videos on the channel useful, please think about giving it a like. You could subscribe to the channel. You could even ring the bell to get notified of my latest content. I am putting out videos now on a pretty regular weekly basis and all or any support is hugely appreciated by me in particular. Um, this is a passion project of mine and a side project I really enjoy doing, but every single subscriber helps to motivate me for the next video. So thank you so much in advance and let's finish this off. So this second example has a little bit more complexity, but let's solve it together. We're being told this time that we're starting off with 0.56 moles of nitrogen dioxide. That's being left to decompose in a container that has a volume of 0.5 liters or decimeters cubed and allowed to reach equilibrium. And at equilibrium, we're analyzing that mixture and finding it contains 0.48 moles of nitrogen monoxide. And we're then being asked to calculate the Kc value. Again, you will be provided with the reversible symbol equation for the reaction taking place as shown here. And we can utilize the vanilla, not now. We can use, utilize that ice method again. The initial moles is what we're told in the question we started with. We've been told we had 0.56 moles of nitrogen dioxide, and they haven't told us any information about nitrogen oxide and oxygen, so we assume they're both zero. They haven't been formed yet at the start of this reaction. So we have 0.56 moles of nitrogen dioxide and zero moles of nitrogen monoxide and oxygen present. Now we scour the question looking for which substance we know the equilibrium moles for. And it appears to be the case we know the equilibrium moles for nitrogen monoxide, which is 0.48. So we write that into our table. Now we come to the C in the ice model, the change in moles. How do we get from zero moles of nitrogen monoxide to 0.48 moles of nitrogen monoxide? Well, we must increase by 0.48. That's zero plus 0.48 moles to form 0.48 moles of nitrogen monoxide. At this point, we wanna be quite careful to make sure we apply the molar ratio correctly for the nitrogen dioxide and the oxygen. Let's start off with the nitrogen dioxide. According to the balanced equation, it appears to be the case that if we have two moles of nitrogen dioxide, it's able to form two moles of nitrogen monoxide. That's a two to two ratio, effectively a one to one ratio of reacting moles. So if we have formed 0.48 moles of nitrogen monoxide, how many moles of nitrogen dioxide would we need to use up to form that 0.48 moles of nitrogen monoxide? Well, since it's a one to one ratio, it would seem to be the case that if we used up 
0.48 moles of nitrogen dioxide, it would form 0.48 moles of nitrogen monoxide at equilibrium. So we started with 0.56, we take away 0.48, we use up 0.48 moles of nitrogen dioxide in the reaction to form this amount of nitrogen monoxide. And therefore that leaves us with only 0.08 moles of nitrogen dioxide left at equilibrium after that's happened. Now we're most careful in working out the moles of oxygen at equilibrium, the change in moles of oxygen, because looking at the equation, it's a two to one ratio of reacting moles for nitrogen dioxide to oxygen. Two moles of nitrogen dioxide form one mole of oxygen in this reaction. So if we use up 0.48 moles of nitrogen dioxide, we will not form 0.48 moles of oxygen. Two moles of nitrogen dioxide only forms one mole of oxygen, so 0.48 will only form half the amount of oxygen, not 0.48, but half of 0.48. So we are not forming 0.48, we're forming 0.48 divided by two. It's a two to one ratio, divide two by one to make that one. 0.48 divided by two is actually only forming 0.24 moles of oxygen in this reaction because we're applying that two to one ratio to the amount of moles we actually used up in the reaction. If we utilize 0.48 moles of nitrogen dioxide, it will only be able to form half the amount or 0.24 moles of oxygen according to that two to one ratio shown in the balanced equation. So that's our moles of oxygen at equilibrium. Really important to apply the mole ratio effectively at this point. As shown before, the case expression doesn't actually work in moles equilibrium, it works in concentrations. Concentrations is moles over volume. So we divide all those mole values by the volume in the question, which was 0.5 liters as shown by the size of the container. That leaves us with 0.16 moles per liter of nitrogen dioxide, 0.96 moles per liter of nitrogen monoxide, and 0.48 moles per liter of oxygen. Now we're gonna write the case expression and plug those numbers in. As seen before, the case expression is the products of reactants, that is the concentrations of products raise the power of any coefficients in the balanced equation, divided by the concentrations of reactants also raise the power of any coefficients in the balanced equation. That's therefore gonna be as shown here. It's gonna be NO square brackets squared, because that's the concentration of NO raised the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation, times by the concentration of oxygen, divided by the concentration of NO2, also squared or raised the power of the two in the balanced equation. That's our case expression. We're now gonna plug these concentrations into that case expression and see what comes out. So there are those numbers plugged in. And the value that comes out when you plug it in your calculator is 17.3 to three significant figures. So 17.3 watt, we need to work out a unit. I'll show you how to do that now. So to work out the unit, all we do is we substitute in the unit of concentration in place of the values in the case expression um, and see what's left over. So we've got mole per dm minus three times mole per dm minus three times mole per dm minus three on top, divided by mole per dm minus three times mole per dm minus three below. So we can cancel out two mole per dm minus three values top and bottom because they're being divided by each other. And that leaves us with mole per dm minus three over nothing. In other words, we're left with just mole per dm minus three as our unit of Kc. And that is our two worked examples. Okay, I hope that really covers everything. Uh, vanilla ice, do you have anything to add at this moment? Fair enough. All oh, frivolity aside, I do really hope this has helped you to better understand how to tackle what can be challenging equilibrium KC calculations. Um, and I really look forward to talking to you in the next Alchemist Chemistry video where we uh, expand on another chemistry idea. Um, as always, thanks for listening. Take care. Bye now.